Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. This is May the 1st, 2016. This is a season of Easter. We're celebrating the Easter season, and most of the hymns and the theme today will be based on the resurrection and Easter. This is May the 1st, 2016. We're at the corner of Wittenberg and Columbia, Springfield, Ohio. We invite you to come to our service. This is our 1030 service brought to you on YouTube. Our pastor is Pastor John Pollock. We have an 8 o'clock service. We also have Sunday school at 9.15. We will be starting our drive-in service at Melody Cruise Inn Drive-In. The first Sunday of the Melody Cruise Inn Drive-In will be Memorial Day. This is our 60th uh, year that we've done the drive-in service. We invite you, anybody who's listening on YouTube, to come at 8 o'clock from Memorial Day through Labor Day, rain or shine, at the Melody Cruise Inn Drive-In. Come as you are in your car will be starting Memorial Day. This is May the 1st. We'll be announcing to you as to what's going on with the drive-in. But at the present time, we are at 8 o'clock service every Sunday, 10.30 service every Sunday, and we're at 9.15 Sunday School. So come and join us anytime. In the order of service today, we will have the welcome by Pastor Pollock. After that, the order of confession and forgiveness. We invite you to think now of repentance. Jesus says, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We ask you to think now of that. We'll have the confession and forgiveness. And the opening hymn is Christ is Alive. This is in context with the resurrection. You're looking now, you're seeing the choir as they're getting ready to process. The choir will come in with the procession singing Christ is Alive. It's hymn number 389 of the, the uh, ELW book. So if you happen to have that book, you can sing along with us, Christ is Alive, and celebrate the resurrection. After that, the greeting in Kyrie, the hymn of praise, prayer of the day. And our pastor, Pastor Pollock, will begin the service. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our worship service this morning, and we give a special welcome to our visitors, new in the Springfield Clark County area or looking for a new church home, we invite you to make St. John your new church home. If you were not aware, our secretary, uh, Charlene's mother, was called from the church militant to the church triumphant this week, so she was out of the office. So what you have is the best thing I can come up with with my computer <laughs> illiteracy. So you have the order of service on one side, sermon notes on the other, and in between you have the lessons and the prayer of the day. So we will be using 710. Normally, of course, on communion Sundays, everything is in the bulletin except for the hymns. Today, we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. We will have to go to each page uh, as is needed. So we begin on page 94 with the order of confession and forgiveness. And I invite those who can do so without difficulty to please stand as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in all eternity by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and 
alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We now begin our worship with hymn number 389, Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing. Hymn number 389, Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing. Our opening hymn is Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing. It was written by Brian A. Wren, who was born in 1936, a contemporary hymn. It has to do with Easter, and you will be able to see the choir processing in for their opening procession as our service begins now that we've had confession of our sins. Now we have our service of praise. The first thing that we do now is to sing this hymn of praise, Christ is Alive, Red Christians Sing.
God's word it has to do with the Easter season. The first reading is from Acts chapter 16. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, he immediately thought, Congregation is singing Psalm 67 responsibly.
hatred are for the healing of the nations. Nothing that cursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We're all standing now to sing the gospel acclamation. Our pastor is Pastor John Pollock. He'll be reading the gospel, and then he'll be preaching a sermon on how to find peace. Sing along with us the gospel acclamation, showing our great respect for the gospel, the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. is standing with Pastor, and he's reading the gospel. Pastor John Pollock, Springfield, Ohio, St. John's Lutheran Church. Directed by Vicki Perks.
this time you may take your order of service and flip it over to the sermon notes and prepare to study God's Word, the 14th chapter of the Gospel of St. John, focusing on verse 27. Grace, mercy, and peace be from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. How do you find peace? How do you find peace in order to overcome and survive in the midst of distress and affliction? How do you find peace when faced with trial, tribulation? How do you find peace after the loss of someone you love? Some people, when faced with disturbances in their life will turn to Eastern mysticism. Some will turn to meditation. Some will try to have a positive outlook on life. And others will try to forget the circumstances altogether. The problem is that none of these work. None of these will give you peace. They may give you peace for a moment. They may give you peace for a day. But they will not give you peace as you continue your daily journey on earth. So how do you find peace? For the answer to that question, we turn to our gospel reading for today. To that 14th chapter of the Gospel of St. John. Since we have had a reading from this chapter already, a couple of weeks ago, you should remember that Jesus is speaking to his disciples on the night of his betrayal. They are in the upper room. As mentioned before, he has washed the disciples' feet. He has instituted the Lord's Supper. And he is giving them a final teaching moment before they go over to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus will be betrayed by Judas, handed over to evil men to suffer and to die. And so as Jesus speaks, we marvel at the fact that he cares nothing about himself. He says nothing about his upcoming suffering, death, but instead his concern is about us. His concern is about his disciples. His concern is about, is about his church and how it will handle the difficulties it will face in the world until Jesus returns in glory. And so, to answer that question of how do we find peace, we look at verse 27 where Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. From these words of Jesus, the first step in finding peace is to believe in Jesus. I know that may sound quite simple, but it is the truth. If you want to have peace in the world, it begins by believing in Jesus. At the beginning of the 14th chapter, Jesus had said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Again, in this 27th verse, he's telling us to believe in him. And again, he's telling us for our hearts not to be troubled. So obviously Jesus can do something for us that no one else can do or he would not repeat this. So what do I mean when I say you must believe in Jesus? The word believe means to trust in someone. It means to commit your life to them. It means to place your life in their hands totally and completely and in doing so having that confidence that they will do what is best for you and lead you on that path that is best for you. And so it means if you trust, if you commit yourself to Jesus, you are committing yourself to the one who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. You are committing yourself to the one who says, I am the Father of all. You are committing yourself to the one who says, I am the resurrection and the life. You are committing yourself to the one who says, I am the one who was expected. I am the Son of God, the Savior of the world. 
That is far different than saying you believe in Jesus as another philosopher in a long line of philosophers throughout history. That's quite different than saying you believe that Jesus was another good moral teacher among a history of moral teachers. It is more than saying Jesus is a, you believe in Jesus as a prophet in a long line of prophets. Or that you believe in Jesus as another religious leader in a long line of religious leaders who tell us how to somehow have connection with God. No, to find peace, you must believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You must believe in Jesus Christ as we confess him in the creeds, both the Apostle the Nicene and the Athanasian Creed, which we very rarely use anymore. That Jesus is the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried, the third day rose again, ascended into heaven, and comes, waits to come again to judge the living. To believe in Jesus Christ is that first step towards having peace because without Jesus there is no peace. Now some might argue, well why can't I believe in someone or something else? Well you can't, go right ahead. You have that freedom. But that someone else or that something else will not promise you peace as Jesus is doing today in our gospel lesson. They will lay out for you a bunch of rules and regulations and requirements and commands and rituals that if you do them all right, then maybe you might enter into paradise upon your death. But there is no guarantee. So, do you want to believe in the one who promises you peace? And who seals that promise with his own blood upon the cross, his death on the cross. And with that blood, pays the debt of sin that you owe. Or do you want to believe in someone who just says, here's a bunch of rules and regulations, good luck, and hope you make it. Jesus is the one who tells us that in him we have a peace which passes all understanding. As he says in our text today, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. My peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. The word leave means to send something to someone. It means to yield it up to them. So Jesus says, I am giving to you my peace. I am giving you that peace the Father has given me so that I may fulfill his will and carry out his plan of salvation. I am giving you that peace that the Father has given me so that you might be an heir to the kingdom and a child of the heavenly Father. The word give means to commit something to someone. It means to bestow it upon them or to deliver it to them. So Jesus is saying, I am bestowing upon you. I am delivering to you. I am committing to you that peace which passes all understanding. That peace which I only can give as the Son of the Father. Moses couldn't give it to the Hebrew children. Jeremiah couldn't give it, or Isaiah, or any of the other prophets to the Hebrew children. King David couldn't give it to the nation of Israel. King Solomon couldn't give it to the nation of Israel. Buddha, Confucius, El, Rana, Hubbard, Sun, Young, Moon, Muhammad, whoever you want to name, they cannot give that peace. It's only Jesus. And Jesus is the only one who makes such a claim and backs it up with his love. So that first step to peace is to believe in Jesus. The second step is to understand and to realize that this gift is free. That this gift is not something you have to earn. This gift is not something you purchase. This gift is not something that is granted after many years of service. This is a free gift from the grace of God and faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Notice as Jesus is talking about giving this peace to us, He says, My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Not as the world gives. Why does Jesus say that? Because how does the world give things to us? How does 
desire to give thanks is they do it with the expectation of something in return. I will give you this, but you have to give me that. There's no free ride. There are no free gifts. It's like when we look across the world and we look at, for example, Israel and the Palestinians. They both want peace. But Israel says to the Palestinians, if you want your own state, if you want us to recognize our own state, then you have to recognize us. You have to recognize our right to exist as a nation of Israel. And then there's some other requirements for having peace between Israel and the Palestinians. The problem is, part of the Palestinians are supported by Iran. And what's Iran's attitude? Iran says the Holocaust never happened. Even though you can go to Auschwitz, even though you can go to any of the other concentration camps and see the horror of the Holocaust, they say it never happened. And they also take pride in saying their number one aim is to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. So obviously you're not going to have peace if Israel cannot receive what it wants. And that is recognition. And that is safety. And that is security. It's like when a union goes to its employer and says, we both would like a pay raise. And the, what does the employer say? The employer doesn't just say, oh, fine, okay, we'll give you a dollar an hour raise. The employer says, okay, you want a raise? Now you have to do this for us. You either have to give up something or you have to take less holidays or have less vacation time or work more hours or whatever. But there's always a give and take. It's never just, yeah, sure, we'll give you a dollar an hour raise nothing, no other negotiations. Or, as we're so familiar with now, since we're in that wonderful time of presidential elections, politicians are always telling us what they'll give us so that we'll vote for them. But what do we say in return? We say, fine, you give us that, but we also want you to give us this, this, and this. And the politician that agrees with us, we vote for the politician that won't give us what we want, we don't vote for. That's the way the, the world operates. It's peace for a price. It's peace for getting something in return. But then along comes Jesus. And Jesus says, my peace is free. I do not give you as the world. My peace is yours simply because you believe in me as your Lord and Savior. The peace I give you is yours because you believe that that day I died upon that cross, I paid the debt of sin that you owe for your sins that you committed. My peace is your gift because you believe that on that third day I rose again from the dead and 40 days later ascended into heaven and that through faith in me you have forgiveness of sins and that promise of everlasting. That is how Jesus came. It is free. The world gives us something, and when they don't like how we're acting, they take it away. The world, countries make a peace treaty, or write, make a document to end fighting for a while, and then one of them decides they don't like it. They take it back and they start fighting. Jesus is not like that. Jesus instead, his peace is everlasting, while world peace can even quit. Let me repeat that because I know that's one of your questions. Jesus' peace is everlasting, world peace can even quit. In John chapter 16, two chapters later from the one today we read, Jesus is still in the upper room. In the 33rd verse of that 16th chapter, he goes back to the subject of peace and says in John 16, 33, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. Hear the word peace. <laughs> Besides meaning an absence of strife, an absence of fear, and so forth, the word peace also means to continue having peace even after the death and resurrection of Jesus. So Jesus is telling us, in me you have peace, 
In the world we will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. See, Jesus never promised us a rose garden. Jesus never promised that by following him we wouldn't have trial or tribulation. Instead, he warned us the opposite could happen. He told us that by following him we could cause a rebellion within our family. We could turn parents against children, brothers against brothers, sisters against sisters, brothers against sisters, husbands against wives, and on and on the different relationships. He said that could happen. But we are not in despair because he has overcome the world. He has conquered it. He is victorious over it. He has prevailed. That's what uh, the word overcome means as he says it in, our, in 1633. The word tribulation means distress or opposition, to be crushed, to be squeezed, or to be afflicted. But through all that, Jesus gives us a peace that passes all understand. And this peace is real. And this peace can help us in the most direst times in our lives. Go back with me to those dark days in our nation's history. To one of its darkest chapters. 1861 to 1865. The war between the states or as you call it, the Civil War. It is the spring of 1864. Sherman is making Georgia howl. Grant is beginning his steamroller through Virginia, crunching up the Army of Northern Virginia. A battle is raging in Virginia, and a young soldier is wounded. Several of his companions grab him and put him on a blanket and carrying him back behind the lines in order for him to receive medical care. About halfway back, the wounded soldier tells his comrades, he says, put me down. And so they put him down. They think maybe he wants a drink of water or something, but instead he says, put me down. He says, friends, he says, I'm dying. He says, there's no reason to take me any further. And so the friends say their final farewells and head back to the front. After a few minutes, a young officer rides by and he sees the young soldier lying there sweltering in the heat and in his own blood. And he says to him, he says, can I do something for you? And the wounded soldier says, no thank you. The officer persists, he says, shall I get you a little water? And the young soldier says, no thanks, I'm done. The officer then says, is there anything I can do to you? Shall I write the to a friend, a family. The young soldier says, I have no one for you to write to. He says, but there is one thing for which I would be much obliged. He says, in my pack, you'll find a copy of the New Testament. If you could be so kind, would you take that New Testament now and would you, would you turn it to the Gospel of John? And when you go to the 14th chapter, and toward the end of that chapter, there's a verse that begins with the word peace. I would like for you to read that to me. The officer being a Christian, and a devout Christian knew exactly what verse the young soldier wished to have read. And he turned to that 27th verse of the 14th chapter of John and read King James Version. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Thank you, sir, said the dying man. I have that peace. I'm going to that city. God is with me. I want no more. young man had that peace that passes all understanding. He had that peace that we receive only through faith in Jesus Christ. That peace we receive only when we recognize the fact that it is Jesus' free gift to us. So how can we find peace in a tumultuous world? 
How can we find peace in times of distress, tribulation, trial, and affliction? How can we find peace when someone very dear to us is called from the church militant to the church triumph? We find peace by believing in Jesus Christ, by believing He is the way, the truth, and the life, by believing He is the resurrection and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through Him. We find that peace by realizing that it is Jesus' free gift, that true peace that always lasts, that is with us forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We invite you who are watching to say the Nicene Creed. This is our confession of faith. Confess with us our belief. Church prayers of intercession.
Now time for our offering and offering prayer. As our pastor, Pastor John Pollock, is preparing the elements of Holy Communion, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We'll be receiving Holy Communion today. Holy Communion will be, uh, the first thing we will have will be the Great Thanksgiving, then the Sanctus, which is the Holy, 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 then the Eucharistic Prayer, the Lord's Prayer, Agnus Dei, which is Lamb of God, then will be the distribution of Holy Communion. You'll be watching this, and this will be coming up. Then we'll have the blessing, the post-communion prayer, the benediction, and the, the closing hymn will be, Go, My Children. There you see the Stickfords, uh, Ralph and Caroline Stickford, who are the ushers, passing out the offering plates. His pastor is preparing the elements of Holy Communion on the altar. Then you'll receive, we'll be receiving Holy Communion, the body of love of Christ. We're receiving your eternal life. As we repent, we believe. We have our altar call, we go to the altar, we receive Holy Communion, and by this we show that we are born again every day, and we believe. You have repeated with us our profession of faith, which is the Nicene Creed. We use various creeds. Sometimes we use the Apostles' Creed, but when we have communion, we use the Nicene Creed, which you have recited today. This is St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. We're at the corner of Wittenberg and Columbia. We invite you to come to our service on 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. It's in the sanctuary except during uh, the summer between uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day. It's at the Melody Cruise Inn Drive-In, Springfield, Ohio. The 10.30 service is always in the sanctuary every Sunday. We have a communion service at 6.30 on Wednesday evenings in the chapel. You may receive Holy Communion at least once a week. You can see the acolytes as they're coming forward. You'll be receiving the offering plates after the offering and offering prayer will be the great thanksgiving and the uh, preface then the song says holy 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 we believe during the holy 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 that all the members of the church triumphant past present future we're all together in the body of christ all around the throne as we're worshiping jesus christ as he is here with us
We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. And the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is new covenant, my blood shed to for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are and we ask you mercifully to accept your, our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the honor and glory of your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seen.
Members of St. John's Church are now approaching the altar. This is the altar call. We're showing by going to the altar that we believe Jesus is present with us in the bread, in the wine. It's the true body and blood of Jesus Christ. So we're all united in one, church triumphant, the people who've gone before us, people who will go in front of us. Jesus Christ will be the same today and forever. You see the members of the congregation receiving Holy Communion. They're received with the power, filled with the power of Jesus Christ. By our Lord Jesus Christ, with precious blood, strength and preserve your true faith and the life eternal. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have <coughs> united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We conclude our celebration with hymn number 543, Go, my children, with my blessing. Hymn number 543, on the back of your worship. Our final hymn is written by Jaroslav Vadja, V-A-G-D-A, born in 1919 in Czechoslovakian hymn writer. Go, my children, with my blessing. This is a sending hymn that has to do with the Easter season. The music is Welsh music arranged by Ralph Vaughan Williams who lived 1872-1958. Go my children with your blessing. Czechoslovakian hymn writer Jaroslav Vodka.
thank you for watching St. John's on YouTube. Tune in anytime. We're happy to bring you this service. Our church offers a Christian school program ages 3 and 4, nursery and pre-K. For more information, call the school office, 325-4311. That's 325-4311. That's our Christian school and daycare. Tune in anytime. Thank you for joining us in our worship this Lord's Day. The St. John's Lutheran Church, this is May the 1st, 2016. This is the Easter season. We hope and we pray that God will continue to bless you and keep you this day and all your days. We will pray for you and continue to pray for us. Join us anytime. Come and be here in person with some of the best Christian people in Clark County. We provide 8,000 meals to the homeless every month. We provide the uh, open pantry. We provide uh, hand goods and various things. If you're in need, call the church office and we will supply you with your needs. If you're homeless, if you're poor, this is our, we believe, our duty in our community to serve others as Jesus asked to do. Tune in anytime. This is May the 1st, 2016. We're happy to have you join us. Our 1030 service, St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio, corner of Wittenberg and Columbia.